we have a problem, disconnect, emotional disconnection. And the cost to society now is in emotional, physical, mental, and relational health. Depression, rage, isolation, suicide, early cardiac death. Our nurture science program at Columbia University is studying the ability of emotional connection to repair this disconnect. Now you all know intuitively what emotional connection is, but let's take a moment and we'll close our eyes and allow ourselves to feel what it feels like to be close to someone we love. How does your body respond? Do you love the tone of their voice? Do your eyes light up when you see each other? Do you enjoy give and take? We can open our eyes. See, you intuitively know how to do it. Four interactions, attraction, vocal communication, facial communication, reciprocity. These are the four interactions that designate emotional connection. Emotional connection is the antidote to the rips in the fabric of our society that David is talking about. Emotional connection does not come from the brain. This is not political, it's biological. Yeah, I see a nod, yes. You probably think your brain controls your actions. Did your brain tell you that? <laughs> the reality is that we have two brains, two nervous systems. We have this brain and we have our gut brain. This nervous system, the gut brain nervous system, is the nervous system of our gut feelings and heart to heart communications of our hearts and souls. This is the nervous system that allows us to calm each other. Sure, the two are connected. I have big nerve. But the information flow tells you how important this second brain is. 20% top down from brain to gut. 80% up from gut to brain. If this isn't calm, this brain is jammed. This has huge implications for brain development. If this is calm, it sends an all clear signal. You can think, you can organize, you can create. Now, how do we get connected in the first place? The biological roots of emotional connection start during pregnancy, when the mother's body regulates the fetus and vice versa, co-regulation. This co-regulation after birth, because of its mutual benefits, ensures that mother and baby will want to be together. This has important survival value, and it sets the baby up to connect with others, with father, with grandparents, grandparents, <laughs> <laughs> other family members, and then out into the community, importantly, to teachers. Emotional connection generates emotional connection. It's infectious. It's a positive cycle. When a child experiences calm from co-regulation over and over again, this child equates needs with needs being met. Then when this child sees someone with a need, this child wants to fill it. This is the basis of empathy, compassion, altruism, and cooperation. Now, what about the cycle of isolation that David is talking about? It's the cycle of disconnect. When a person has a need for regulation, as you told us, and it's not there, you have to rely on self-regulation. Self-regulation, no matter how strong, sooner or later becomes dysregulation. If this cycle is repeated over and over again, a child becomes withdrawn or a bully. And we know only too well from reading the headlines of the national and international news what happens with adults. A brain without emotional connection is dangerous. So we have to get everybody onto the positive cycle, the cycle where needs are met. Emotional co-regulation co involves, by definition, two people, not one. It has to be mutual to be beneficial. 
This means we can rescue each other. And as our studies have shown, a parent can rescue a child, even from emotional behavioral and developmental disorders, by just ratcheting up emotional connection and co-regulation. And in the process, it rescues the mother too, as our work showed, from depression and anxiety. So no surprise then that early relational health has an outsized impact on brain and all other aspects of development. But my four decades of work shows that emotional connections benefits go up as well as down the generations. And while I've been doing this work, the situation has become more and more urgent. Now is the moment to rescue the next generation. And I tip my hat to all of you here who are working on that repair. And anyone who wants to talk to me further about the science behind this work, I'll be here the entire two days. But today, we're going to try to connect in intimate conversation across differences, very important across differences, uh, concerning trauma and in our narratives. The weavers here know how to do this connecting. But you do it through relating, not through thinking. So while we're working, note warmth and interaction and repair in, in the connections you make. Pay attention to body language, attraction, to vocal tone, vocal communication, to eye contact and expression, facial communication, and to give and take, equal give and take, reciprocity. Whether this weave movement grows depends, I think, on today, on making the emotional connections between us today. And remember, relate has it, as in the word relate is elate, which means to make happy or joyful. Joy is what we experience when we emotionally connect. Emotional connection is the thread that weaves us together.